computer. Welcome to Get In, We're Going Healing, a show all about improving your well-being and your health so you can be the best person and your best version of you. So today's show, we are going to be talking about yoga and mental health and mindfulness and all things that yoga can benefit from you. So today we have a special guest. We have Nicole, though I know her as Coco. So I'm going to bring her on and we will get started. Welcome, Coco. Thank you, Tova. So I know that you are a yoga teacher. And I know that you work with a lot of different mediums for yoga. And uh, Nicole and I, well, Coco, as I know her, uh, we've known each other for a long time, way back in the, I'd say, mid 2000s or so. Early, early 2000s. Somewhere around that phase um, when you had a community group, a uh, community home, basically, a, a community event um, called Erlecta. And I don't even remember how I found it, but I did. And you were running that at that time. And it was so imperative to my growth at the time. It was so big and important to who I was at the time. I remember when you came in and added your spark, your energy to it. And you helped me really continue to, you know, just really feel the full energy of it. Everybody who participated in it made it happen. As you remember, it was, there was no, not a single cost to a single thing was added to it. Everything was by contribution, however that may be. And um, there was, you know, it was all exchange, e even goods coming in, you know, I even had you know, organic farmers from out in the county, they would just bring in a whole load of stuff. And that's what we would prepare with that day in the slow kitchen, the seasonal local organic kitchen. So we had so many wonderful things going on. And you asked if you could bring your awesome group in. And it all just made this amazing energy. And, and so many people met. It was a great, great time. It was so wonderful. At the time I was teaching, um, while I was doing a pagan study group, I was doing the Windsor Pagan Study Group, um, where we basically just picked a topic each week and uh, talked about it and learned about something new or something regarding paganism. And I remember you let us use the yoga loft, which was an amazing space. Like that was such an amazing space. Yes. Yes, it was the top floor. So the building, people here in the Windsor area know this building as the Nesbitt Inn or, you know, Reno's house. Uh, but between those two, it was Erleshta. I rented it uh, for a, a short lease. And uh, it's that beautiful building there on Elliott Street. It's, it's, it's quite a large mansion home. And the whole top floor, as you remember, was one big loft. And I had a friend of mine who's an artist. She created around the circle of it. So, so it was sort of pyramidal, you know, in the center with that skylight and uh, beautiful wood floors. And my, my friend painted that blossoming, beautiful thousand petaled lotus. Yes. Yeah, right at the top, the, the top floor of that beautiful building. And I ran the yoga, the meditation, the, the slow kitchen along with other volunteers. And I had been, you know, experimenting with raw foods and, and vegan foods and things like that for some years by that point. I was making the smoothies and the chai uh, and doing the Thai massage, of course. And even, yes. um, even the mud baths and all that stuff in that gorgeous old cloth tub. <laughs> I know it was so amazing. And even then the uh, yard, the you, yard was amazing. Yeah, the garden and the beautiful circles for drumming. But uh, people like you who brought in their energy, you know, there was the, um, all those Friday night parties with the DJs who came right from the University of Windsor mm -hmm. and all their amazing pro setup. And then everyone who showed up with djembes and bells and amazing, you know, dancing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just recalling it all now. There was uh, colon hydrotherapy in the basement. Yes, I remember that. And all kinds of different healers, Reiki, stones, and people just brought in their gifts, took what was given, gave what they gave, zero money, uh, set prices. So it just kind of was based on that. And that was all based on my 
I had just returned from several years in Southeast Asia and, you know, just my travels around the world where I learned so much from staying at places like ashrams, monasteries, uh, you know, different places where exchange is the way that you pay for things and there's no mm-hmm. price. And I really believe in that. I love that. And so I tried to bring it here to Windsor and uh, it was fun. It was great. I really enjoyed the energy there. It was such a great vibe. It was so relaxing, but welcoming at the same time. I mean, it was just, it was my people. (laughs) It's totally my people. I, I miss it very much. It's hard to find anything like that in this city anymore. Like there's just no no connection like that anymore. It's sad. I I love to think that after I left that scene and and, you know shortly thereafter I became a mom and my life became very different Um, but I I know that people from that scene continue to blossom on. If you recall we had that farmer's market in the parking lot. Yes I do. And uh, I know a lot of those people bring their stuff now to the downtown farmer's market that has spun off since then. And there are, you know, when I tell people who maybe aren't from this area, Windsor, Essex, when I tell them what a Mecca this place is for alternative healers, different types of practitioners, all scattered throughout the county, different types of places and the, the farms, the healthy food, your honey, eggs, it's Mm. beautiful. You know, this this place we're in is fertile and abundant. And I'm one of very many people who are bringing a lot of wonderful alternative healing techniques to the area. So it's it's abundant, Mm -hmm. people can find it. People can find a lot easier than before. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Cool. I made a lot of wonderful friendships through going there. A lot of deep connections that are still connections, people who are very relevant to my healing and my growth and still continue to be amazing friends. So I'm very grateful that you did it. I just, just through that, I've just made amazing connections. You included. It's just right. wonderful right. to meet so many wonderful right. people. You just made it all, it's, it's all <laughs> worthwhile for one person having that experience. It was wonderful for me as well. So thank you. Well, thank you. (laughs) So thank you for coming on the show today. Um, We've talked in in previous episodes, we've talked a bit about yoga. We've talked about mindfulness. We've talked about, um, I think it was in our episode two, we talked about um, mindfulness and the body scan. Episode one, we talked about meditation. We talked a bit about yoga. We've talked a bit about um, just mental health in general. And uh, I thought it would be great if we could go a little more in depth about yoga and how yoga can really help to stabilize when your anxiety is high, when your depression's kicking in, when maybe those that have ADHD, those who are any neurodivergent of any kind, all of those things, I found yoga is such a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Yes, absolutely. And thank you. You know, my students know well, uh, when they come to my classes, I do try to give, you know, the the whys of what we're doing. What, what is this doing for us? You know, what? how does this weird pose affect my hormones, my lymphatic system, right? So it's very much, and now we can go all over the place from asana, the physical practice, to more of the very subtle practices, which as I've come to, you know, I'm 25 years or so now into practicing yoga, And I know how great the physical stuff is, but how deeply effective the subtler practices are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can go all over, but you know, the beautiful thing about this practice is that it really does clean out and subtle, you know, just slowly change and balance out every aspect of us. Mm-hmm. muscles and bones the organs the heavier stuff the blood flow the different liquids the lymphatic system the air the prana as you as you push through you push out what's old and stale 
and maybe has been sitting in there for a while, whether it's an energetic thing, an emotion, or a, a chunk in your bowels, you know, mm-hmm. that finally releases because you've squeezed it out enough and breathed it out enough, you know, sorry, but it's the truth. We mm-hmm. clean everything out, including the mind, right? Especially when we start really getting to the more mental aspect of the practice. Mm-hmm. And like you said, there's the beautiful thing is there's no rush for it. It's not a competition. You don't earn belts. You don't earn levels. It's just yoga. So it becomes very, uh, very loving and kind. It's detached and non-competitive. So it's just a source of great peacefulness when you get into the practice of it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful for us, right? I started it. I'm trying to think of why I started. Oh, you know what? I know where it started from. Um, I was taking um, body flow at Good Life and it was yoga and Tai Chi and uh, Pilates all combined together. And it was my first exposure to yoga. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, My first exposure was I happened across uh, this program called Inhale Yoga on Oxygen Network back in somewhere around like 2001-ish, I think. And I found it really amazing, but I wasn't really deeply into it. Then I took the body flow class and I loved that, but it, it didn't really flow into the yoga that I wanted to do. And then I found an instructor who after body flow would then go into a more flow type of class of yoga, a separate class, a shorter class at the end and a little more meditation, a little more going inward. And that really, really appealed to me. I've just taken that time to connect inward as opposed to externally. And I kept up with it. And then I stopped going to good life because, well, gyms are expensive. And I I wasn't going often enough to warrant the cost of going. So I got out of it. But over the last few years, call it the last decade or so, I still stick to inhale, which is my, just my preferred yoga, because it's a little more, the music is a little more musicy and a little more fun, a little less the the mantras, which is fun. I like the mantras, but I kind of like to have fun with my yoga. And I really enjoy the way Steve Ross runs his class, even though it's old and it, they play 90s music in like early 2000s and it's very dated, but I like it anyway. And I still do it. Um, and I find myself, I am more into Hatha yoga more than any other type. Although I do love a good slow flow class where you can really just connect with your body, feel the muscles stretch, say to your body, hey, muscle, I feel you stretching. I feel you doing your thing and just let go into it in its own way. Yes, uh, my, my personal style of teaching is to give as much of a nice range of all those different styles that you've just shared you know um, my teacher in India Sunil Kumar he was an integral yoga teacher so integrating all those different aspects under the big umbrella and we would do two hours of physical practice in the morning and he would share with us, with us all different types of yoga from different gurus and then in the evening it was more theoretical and chanting mantras and this and that so we got a really nice umbrella and it really you know gave me a wide aspect of the practice and I love all the different teachers I've popped in on through the years but you know Tova and you know first of all you're like the original video yoga student (laughs) nowadays everyone's doing video yoga but it sounds like you you've been doing it for years oh yeah (laughs) that's great many people are just finding it on video you know many people are just finding it on video but uh yeah no it's something that i love to really share with students to have that wide range to be able to uh get to know your own body's energy Mm -hmm. and to go what practice do I need today, right now? Because we change every day, we change morning, afternoon, evening, and the body doesn't need a power vinyasa yoga class at 8 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. We'd be wide awake and not, we'd be like, woo, full of energy, wanting to clean the house, right? We wanna get that fire energy practice in the, the daytime and when we need that uplift. 
So we really learn through a home practice, which is what I've really, really explored the most. I've, I've peeked in at different teachers over the years, but I truly have been guided by a daily self practice that just, it just has unfolded and I grab in what I take from other teachers and weave it in. But every one of us has that teacher within, that guidance within. And as we start to learn these tools, these yoga tools, whether it's the physical or the subtle, as we start to learn them, we can pick and choose what we need at different times, different mm -hmm. times of the day, different times of the month, different times of your life. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's beautiful to share that yoga is not just this hardcore, badass, ashtanga, fiery yoga class, you know, it's also that, you know, I, I've done so many interesting workshops. You know, I remember down at the downtown yoga studio, I think it was Gina when Gina ran it. She had uh, an instructor come in who taught us a two hour Tadasana. Wow. I think it was there. So it was just two hours in Tadasana, you know, and uh, there was another one that she brought a teacher in who was just a out like an hour in a forward bend, you know? Wow. So sitting, you know, and uh, taking an hour to let it go down. So I love all those different ways you can take this practice and just make it your own mm -hmm. play with it you as you get to know what you see it is all just made up it's all mm -hmm. you know inspired by nature dogs cats trees mountains you know it's all inspired by nature so as we play with yoga it becomes more of just like this creative tool that you can pick out of your pocket what tool you want at any moment Right. I love that. One of the things I love most about it is the, the mindfulness, the awareness. And I've talked in this podcast before about mindfulness, just being the awareness of being just aware and present in your space in that moment. And one of the things I love about yoga, especially a, a slow flow kind of yoga, like you said, doing your own thing in your own way is being able to notice, Ooh, that muscle's tight. Okay. I'm going to hang out here for a bit and breathe into it and feel it. Let go really connect and be in your body in the moment that you're in the body and not just running around doing whatever you have to do, but being fully present in your physical body and noticing when yeah. your body says, Oh, that's a little too far. Okay. I'm going to ease it back. Oh, that feels really good. I'm going to breathe into it and just let go and just be fully present. That's just it. That's the mind body connection right there. And even noticing, you know, just the slightest, like, do you slightly clench? Do you slightly clench? Do you slightly, mm -hmm. do you slightly furrow? It, it, just those slight things when we go that deep into our physical awareness. And that's what it is. The body is the focal point. The body brings you to this moment. And if you start thinking, oh, what am I doing after yoga? Da, 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 da. You start thinking about your to-do list unfolding in the day. Oh, I forgot. I'm back in my body here now. And that's where we maybe try to push the body a little bit past the limits, right? If you find your do, 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 chattering away, well, let's, let's go another millimeter in. Let's see if that brings you back to your body. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling bored in the practice, inch your way a little further. Mm -hmm. And you won't be bored. <laughs> right? as your muscle screams oh, okay okay it's exciting and it's exciting to know and I think it takes some time to really start to get the benefits of it where you actually do start to feel like your circulation is improved your it, it affects our dopamine levels it affects like I said our hormones and that takes a lot of time for things to really for the full body for the machine to be very efficient Mm -hmm. But when you feel that and there's not, you're not sluggish, you're not stressed, you're not hungry, you're getting the right sleep, you know, when you're in your groove, mm -hmm. you know, like feeling good. And mm -hmm. then, you know, when you're starting to get toxic and maybe, and maybe that pulls you back onto your mat. You know, if we, if we wander off, I find that pain, stress, illness, that's often what brings people onto the mat or back to their mat mm -hmm. realize oh that felt really good when I was doing yoga 
I'm not feeling so great anymore. Maybe I should get back on my mat, you know? My yes. very, very first yoga practice, um, I had no idea what I was getting into. My, my boyfriend did yoga every day. And I was like, eventually like brave enough to ask, please, what is this? So we laid down our mats and he took me through a very traditional Hatha yoga practice. And at the end, I don't really remember much of it except for this fine hip sequence that I still teach to this day. But I just recall at the end, laying in the Shavasana and just this awareness of pain freeness. And, you know, I was in my early 20s at the time. And since about the age of 13, I had constant chronic or acute pain due to the scoliosis in my spine and my leg length discrepancy. So my body's been this like achy thing. I felt like I was 80 and I was 20, you know, and then I laid in Shavasana and I had no pain and I was hooked. I mean, it was, I was, it's like, I'm doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. This works. Right. And that doesn't mean that I've had no pain for 25 years. I've had great, you know, it, it's this, the body does this, you know, sometimes that stuff comes up, but I know now I have the tools to bring it down. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny you say that because I actually find when I, I did my yoga practice today before our, uh, before our call. Um, and I haven't done it for about a month. Cause as you know, when you're a parent, sometimes it just, it doesn't line up. Like you're just, you end up having a lot of responsibilities and a lot of things you have to do and you just can't find the time. And next thing you know, it's bedtime and you're saying, okay, could I do yoga or do I need to, do I prioritize sleep? So, you know, as a mom, you don't always make the time when you know that you should it until your body says, okay, listen, we're, yeah. we're at the limit. Yeah. I'm hurting. My shoulder's hurting. My neck was hurting. My, I've been having lots of issues with like bad sleeping posture. So shoulder pain and telling myself, Oh, I got to get yoga done. And then something comes up. And then I say, you know what, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll make time for it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and life gets busy again. And next thing you know, it's bedtime. And I'm like, ah, I didn't do it today. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. So next thing you know, it was like a month went by where I hadn't done my yoga. And I'm like, okay, I really have to. And I, I've posted it on Facebook before. And I've said it just how much better I feel after doing yoga, like when, and I forget, I get so busy. I forget how much better you feel when you're done your yoga practice, how your body does feel more relaxed. The pain and the stress and the agony and the muscles is gone. It's just peace and calm and relax. And it's amazing. It is. And you know, one, one thing I do gift myself with, and uh, you know, I have a very wise mother when I was a new mom, my wise mother said to me, get the sleep when you can, you know, and that was the greatest advice because you tend to, when the babies go to sleep, you tend to start cleaning up and doing all the chores and da, 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 and then pff, you're done. Mm -hmm. Right. So she gave me that good advice and I, I tried to honor that. And I'll try to honor the advice that I give my students to rest often and much. So I, you know, you learn the hard way, what happens when you don't. So what I, what I really try to gift myself with, uh, of course, throughout the day, you know, you can weave your practice in, straighten up when you're driving, take that breath. This is along the lines of mindfulness practice too, right? Just like bringing, like, uh, bringing it in for a moment. You know, if you're at the uh, sink washing dishes and you're hunched up and, oh, I don't want to wash another dish, <laughs> change your mind change your posture, change your mind, take a breath, feel the bubbles, you know, enjoy that you have this dirty dish that your kid ate off of. It's all that. It's a flip of the switch. So I try to, weave, yeah, I try to weave the practice through and I'm very grateful. I teach the practice. So I am doing, you know, especially now that it's video, you know, since March of 2020, it's been all virtual yoga. So I'm doing a lot of yoga these days. <laughs> But, uh, you know, in my live classes, I would tend to demonstrate the pose and then go around and help others adjusting the pose. So now I'm, you know, doing it in front of this camera. It's a different type of teaching, but I'm mm -hmm. still getting the practice. But what I give myself, Tova, and what I share with my students in all my classes is a little bit of love and care, a little like self-massage and a bedtime ritual that you can pick. It can take one minute. 
It can take 10 minutes. You can spend an hour, but it's a lovely transition between the busyness of the day and sleep. And that transition is important because it's hard to just go click and expect to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Anything I do in that ritual, which might include just, you know, getting my massage ball out and sticking it under that one spot and just laying in my bed, even if it's just that, you know, or a few good breaths and I love a good hot bath, any little thing, maybe you just slather some nice cream on your feet. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a short thing you do that brings that right at the end of your day doesn't need to involve your mat coming out and your yoga pants on. It's just some space, a breath, a closure to the day and Mm -hmm. a welcoming into the rest, that awareness of that transition. Because often Mm -hmm. we lay in bed awake and it's so hard to fall asleep. So there's these tools to use where you can just acknowledge that that stuff's there, but let it float on and let's come back to the breath and that feeling of your hands on your feet, you know, simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That reconnection. It does. It doesn't have to take long. I found when I was in my massage practice, when I was working with a lot of my clients, I found a lot of people were very unaware of how their physical body felt. A lot of people, I commonly heard people say, oh, I have pain in my right shoulder, but then it moved to my left lower back and then it moved to my right lower back. And I would say, well, the pain doesn't move. It's not a living thing. It's that each of your muscle groups are letting you know that there's something going on there. It's telling you something's up, but they didn't often listen. And I would, I was, I would give them the body scan. I would give them yoga stretches to do at home just to open up because they were so beneficial for different areas. And I found a lot of my clients in the beginning were not so receptive to it, but over, over my practice, over my years, I found those people kind of fell away. And the vast majority of my clientele were ones that did relish the yoga poses I gave them did do the mindfulness practice. So at least started to with the body scan. And I would ask them before they come in for a session, the day before do a scan and send me a message of what you noticed so that I can tailor the treatment to whatever it is you noticed. If you noticed a certain thing in your body, tell me, and then I'll work out the day, give it to me the day before. So I have time to look up stuff and prepare stuff and be ready and not just throw it at me right there. And I got to think on the spot, which I could do, but I'd rather have time to prepare. And I would give them a lot of this sort of stuff just to help them connect more with their physical sense. Yeah, good for you that you did that, that you gave them more than just your hands. You know, our own hands are our closest healing hands. Mm -hmm. And taking that self-care, people who come to massage, are probably already a bit more open to the idea. You know, some people, oh my gosh, I don't know how they do it. Some people don't even get massages. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but, but you know, it's uh, it's it's so easy maybe to take a pill that knocks the pain down mm-hmm. and you know go to sleep. That's become very much a habit you know and and with without judgment and with only with compassion. Um, you know, and of course, and, and uh, with my scoliosis, sure, I've taken, I've had different, you know, uh, pain relieving drugs over the years, but f- not for many years have I taken any kind of um, like over the counter type of thing. They can, they can take a toll on you mm-hmm. so as best as you can, you know, use what you need to use, but as best as you can, if we can remind ourselves that our body is a, is a healing machine. Mm-hmm. You know? It's constantly rebirthing new cells, shedding old liners, purging out toxins, our body, and it's talking to us. Mm-hmm. It's not, hey, I need a massage right here, you know? <laughs> so the more we listen to it and the more we help it, stretch it, stuff out and get it out every little thing we do to support its processes Mm -hmm. just brings us along that healing path everything starts to feel better Mm -hmm. definitely yeah definitely so I wonder how much do you know about vagal nerve tone about say it again 
vagus nerve tone, your vagal nerve tone? Vagal nerve tone. Sounds yes. like a great band. <laughs> you know what I actually say as you say that, that does. If anybody out there decides to use that name, you got to give credit here. <laughs> um, Is that something so, that you are diagnosed with or something, Tova? No, no, no. So your vagus nerve is your 10th cranial nerve. So you've got 12 cranial nerves that come out of your, your brain through your brain stem, and they go off into the body and innervate different muscles and organs and things like that. Your vagus nerve is generally responsible for your digestion, your heart rate, your fight or flight mode, all of those different things. A lot of your uh, sympathetic nervous system is affected by your vagus nerve. So people who have a lot of anxiety, depression, things like that, they tend to have very poor vagus nerve tone. The muscle's very lax, the, the, the nerve is very lax. So when it's very lax, the signal doesn't move through it the way that it needs to, to calm down the, the parasympathetic nervous system. So your fight or flight response. So um, on this channel, I recommend a lot of times, I strongly recommend uh, How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. Um, just as people are learning to work through their trauma and work through their, uh, their mental blockages that are preventing them from being healthy and being their best self as the little triggers come up and things like that. Um, I recommend this book to people a lot just because it's, it's a how-to manual, essentially. It's a how-to when in these day and age where therapy is really cost prohibitive for a lot of people and without any tools to know how to process as things come up. I find this book, she's the, she's also known as the holistic psychologist. So you can find her on Facebook, Instagram, that sort of stuff. Um, and it's a lot of integrating mind, body, spirit into healing and not just the Western idea of, well, this is what you're diagnosed with. You have anxiety disorder. And then, so here's some medication for anxiety disorder. Rather, how do we work through it in our, it's usually from trauma. More often than not, these things are based in some form of trauma and how to process your trauma. So getting back to the vagus nerve, she talks about um, the poor vagus nerve tone often prevents, it, it creates higher anxiety. It creates like the different stuff with PTSD and stuff like that are just tense reaction to everything is often because our vagus nerve has been activated, but it has poor tone to it. And she talks about um, top down and bottom up ways to tone your vagus nerve. Top down would be things like meditation, mindfulness, breathing, things like that, that start from the mental and move into the physical. Bottom up would be physical that then moves into the mental. Yoga is one of those things that she recommends as a bottom up type of therapy to tone your vagus nerve because like we talked about when you're aware of your physical body and aware of how your body is feeling you can actually affect your mental state yeah. by calming down your physical state so she says I, I underlined it just to make sure I didn't mess up and say it wrong not that she and I have any affiliation whatsoever but you know um, she says um so things like most exercises that engage the polyvagal nerve uh, that we discuss here employ bottom-up processes such as breath work, cold therapy, and the physical aspects of yoga. Though many bottom-up and top-down processes are out of our control, we can consciously choose specific interventions that actively decrease our psychological stress, slow the sympathetic responses in our nervous system, and even strengthen our musculoskeletal and cardiovascular systems. In addition, when we activate, challenge, and tone our vagus nerve in a safe and controlled environment, we build tolerance to learn how to live with discomfort, which is key to building resilience and the ability to recover quickly from hardship. Yeah. So she's right up the alley of all you know, so, so much of mindfulness based stress reduction and yoga. It's, it's right up the alley of what she's saying. It's, and you know, Tova, it is accessible to people. You know, I know, I know you're saying um, it's costly. You know, if there's one thing that the, uh, that the epidemic, the pandemic has done is I, I know because I'm, it's in my own life, it's bringing these techniques right to people's homes. 
You know, mm-hmm. it's so lovely. Whether you're plugging into YouTube or coming to one of my classes, I don't know if I can plug them on your thing. Yeah, but have that. Yeah, they're free, they're free for people through the University of Windsor, and they've been running since early March. And there's my classes. They involve all the yoga and mindfulness stuff. But uh, you know, thankfully, they are more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. And they're they're woven into the schools now. You know, I'm currently right now doing a three-week summer camp for the school board where they're doing yoga every morning. And it's woven in. So these children at a very young age, free in school, you know, and I've been teaching yoga in the schools for years. Really? Yes. It's beautiful to see that this is now it's, it's, it's rare that I teach a kid that's never done yoga or heard of yoga. And that's mind blowing. Uh You know, that's unheard of. We never heard of that. I never heard of yoga when I was a kid. Uh So as you say that, as you say that we had a lot of, I've done a lot of uh, cosmic kids. Yoga is often seen in my home. Um, The school was doing that when my son was in school, they were doing a session of cosmic kids yoga with the kindergartners and they were recommending that once he was sent home. So during the homeschooling period, we did do, uh, and we still do a lot of the cosmic kids yoga uh, with the different poses. And one of the things I love about her style of yoga is she tells a story. So one day we did like a Minecraft yoga, which my kid is all about Minecraft right now. So doing a Minecraft yoga and doing all these different poses that match up with that or like a Sonic the Hedgehog or a, a Frozen or any of these other ones that she uses as a, a story and then each pose works through it. It's introduced it to my son and I have noticed that his emotional regulation has greatly improved since introducing yoga and mindfulness to him. So uh, the fact that it's even offered in schools right now, like you said, it wasn't offered when we were kids. There was no yoga in any way but it's starting to become more aware and more available to children because it does help to regulate your emotional state yeah they have these tools at a very young age it's wonderful and that's global you know that's Mm -hmm. global. i've seen that change over the last decade in particular if not longer of yoga and more and more you hear about mindfulness woven into every level of the school system and you know i i'm teaching them so i know they're there they're at the university of windsor they're they're at maryvale and in the high schools and definitely in the grade schools it's just a really it's a beautiful thing to see and to know it's nice to know that my kid's going to school with a kid who knows how to take a deep breath right. it's good to know all learning this and uh, that it's just becoming woven into their psyche, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I definitely know a lot of adults who uh, have difficulty with emotional regulation. Um, I was one of them. I had to learn until I started doing emotional regulation with my child. I didn't even know it was a thing. And I was f- completely dysregulated in my emotions and would, when anger hit, I would rage because I didn't know how to get a control of it because that wasn't taught to us when we were young right and the beautiful the beautiful thing what I love about mindfulness it's particularly woven into the the fundamental teachings of mindfulness is the compassion right and this goes way back to the Buddhist original beginnings of current what we call mindfulness today goes back to that loving kindness compassionate meditation where you're being so gentle with yourself tova even when you blast off right right because you are you're you're aware of it maybe before you would have blasted off and just moved on didn't acknowledge it just moved now now you have at least the tools to, to notice when you do that, to bring yourself back. It's, it's imp- we implement these tools and strategies slowly and just be so kind to yourself, you know, that mm-hmm. we're human, that, mm-hmm. we do, that we do have emotions, that we do blow up. I love that we're not trying to squash emotions down and hide them and tuck them away. We're letting them come up. Mm-hmm. And we're feeling so therapeutic and we're being okay that they're there. Mm-hmm. We're, we're welcoming it in and loving it and being okay with it, working with it, leaning into it, we call it. 
right? What's mm-hmm. this feeling? Oh, that's kind of gross. Okay. It's scary, but I'm going to lean in and explore it. Right. As opposed to, Oh, I don't want that gross feeling. That's awful. That's not me. We want to instead like notice that that's in us mm-hmm. and, and explore it lovingly with curiosity, with interest, with patience. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful to give that to your kids too, because kids are going to explode you know, mm-hmm. and we got to kind of be okay that they're going to do that and help them guide themselves back to a breath. Hopefully five breaths is what we practice here in my house. Yes. Since they, they do the fun. mountain. Yep. Five breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. That it's, is a, a, it's a common one in our house too. Although lately I've been getting a lot of pushback when I say, okay, you need to take a few breaths because yeah. you're starting to lose control. I don't want to, I'm not going to. Yeah. And I say, well, let's, let's both do them. I need some too. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Cause at your kid's age, he still thinks you're cool. Right. <laughs> my, kids are now, my kids are now 12 and 13 and they're like, oh, I'm not cool anymore. Right. But modeling it and being there with him and being like, yeah, I know. I feel that anger too, man. I feel it too. Oh, I feel it too. You know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna breathe. And I'm gonna relax. And I'm gonna kind of just try to talk to you. And we're both in this together, you know. And I try to be right there with them at eye level. And because there are great teachers, hey? They are, are very much. Yeah. They definitely make you become aware of where you're at, right? Especially if you. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I love my son, but there are times I'm like, little boy, I love you so much, but I need to walk away now because I'm starting to get mad. Yes. I think that's very healthy. Mommy's going to go take five breaths in the other room because right now that's what I need or Mm -hmm. else it might go go sideways. (laughs) And they even said, you know, I'm serious. They're like, okay, mommy's got to go take a few breaths. Right. It's right. Yeah, He's even said, good. mom, I think you need to go take a few breaths. Yeah. You're just reminding me right <clears> now <throat> of, um, you know, just, just uh, when we give ourselves compassion to take breaks like that, you know, uh, I've done some beautiful types of meditation over in Southeast Asia. I've been exposed to a lot of different styles of meditation and different silent type of retreats, Vipassana type of silence. Um, and, and what I learned is that it's okay and, and very lovely to do for yourself to put, I, I, we would have these at this one place, we would have these buttons you could put on. I'm in silence, you know, and you could wear, it's up to you how long you want to wear it. But when you've got your button on, everyone knows that you're, you're not being rude that you don't want to talk to them. You're letting them know lovingly I need, I, I can't be social right now. I need silence. It was a very social place, but once in a while, you know, you just see someone they've got their button on, you know, we've all been practicing these different silent meditation techniques and it's a loving thing to do for yourself to take that silence. And it's loving to let the people in your home, your son, your spouse, whatever, let them know, you know, you don't have to wear a button, maybe something, you know, I'm going to go in silence and, and it's cause I love you. It's not, I'm going to walk out the door and slam it and go and be quiet. It's I need, I need some space. I need some quiet and I'm going there for com- with compassion for myself and with love for you, you know, because sometimes when we leave the room, someone might think we're leaving the argument or leaving. She just left. So we need to communicate it, right? We need to be let other people know, I, I, I love you. I want to deal with this, but I really just need, and you take as long as you need, but at mm-hmm. least the communication and both people know, you know, those buttons. I love them. Cause then you want to say, I want to say they, they yeah. had that in, um, if I remember correctly, I want to say in, uh, eat, pray, love. I'm pretty sure she had one when she was in oh, her, really? at the time. I want to say it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I want to say when she yeah. was in the ashram, she had one too, because she was, ha- oh. she was expected to learn that, that mindfulness, that meditation in that space. And yeah. just to be in that silence. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
It, it is. It's beautiful. All those different strategies are so cool. You know, any little thing you do that just challenges you to be in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, a, like a blindfold tasting. That's fun, right? Like just blindfold, uh, just being a little bit more aware of taste. All those little tricks that, you know, so, some work, some don't. I love that about all have, having all these teachers and tools. You get to figure out what works for you. No, that doesn't, that does. I'm attracted to that. And there's so many things that work. Just some of us like music. Some of us like quiet. It's, it's so vast, all the different styles. So it's, mm -hmm. we're really at a beautiful time of having access to all of this. It really so, is. I, I joke with my son all the time because he, he's young enough. He doesn't understand, but I keep saying, do you have any idea what I would have given for the amount of technology and the availability of stuff when I was growing up? There wasn't, you couldn't find these things, not easily. And the library, at least in Windsor, didn't stock a lot. Their occult section was very small. Their new age occult section was very small and they didn't stock a lot of information on any of these items. Now, a quick Google search and you can find like a bajillion different websites that'll give you this information and give you these details and help you work through that. And I think it's absolutely amazing. The technology is pretty cool. There's no way I'm changing in my 1970s youth. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I, loved, I loved sleepovers where we all just giggle and talk. You know, my daughter has sleepovers and I got to go in there and take each one of their phones. <laughs> <laughs> Those things I loved about my, my childhood, right? Cereal in front of the TV on Saturday mornings, yes. right? Was the greatest technology. <laughs> Including the commercials. Cause my child can't handle commercials. I'm like, you don't even understand. That was it. life. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think, I think we had a good time. I, I wouldn't trade the technology for the childhood that I had, but as someone who spent a lot of time in the library researching things and being frustrated with the lack of information, I think today's access is amazing. You could learn anything you want in a split yeah. second, in a split second, all you have to do is Google it and you could find it. It's, it's vastly amazing and allows things like this, where we can have these talks and share them with other people that wouldn't have been an option before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm it is pretty you. amazing. So we've talked before about uh, yoga and uh, self-care and why it's an important part of a self-care ritual to have your yoga. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yoga for self-care? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. You know, that's, that's, that's what's kept me on my, on my mat and in my practice, you know, and I know it benefits others. I know it, it helps others and I've become a teacher. I can help others through teaching, but it's, it's all, it, I peeled away just layers and layers of you know, traumas of all sorts, you know, whatever they're physical, emotional, mental, you, you peel and you peel, right? There's that analogy of the onion, right? And layer by layer, you just peel off those layers, man. Your yoga practice really never ends. It never gets boring because there's another layer to peel off. You know, whether you think you've finally succeeded at this pose, oh, you can take it a little deeper. Or whether you finally think you've hit samadhi and then, oh, it gets even bigger, right? It's, <laughs> it's peeling and peeling. and so interesting to delve in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I like that it challenges you. One of the things that I like about yoga, um, some of my friends have said it gets a little stale. And I'm like, well, at that point, try a different type of yoga. Try a different pose that you've never done before. Try an inverted pose because they're very challenging. And when you succeed at something, when you finally get it, it's that amazing rush that, oh my gosh, I've been working for this. and I've been trying to get it. And look at that. I did it. That's, that's so great. That's so great that you, you feel that exhilaration from it. Mm -hmm. I also just love the, the connection whenever I, I do, like you said, when you feel frustrated, when you feel stressed, it's time to hit the mat. It's time to leave it all on the mat. As they say, leave it, leave it where you were and just stretch it out. And when you come out of it, you just feel so relaxed and so 
at peace. Yeah. And you, you virtually, you truly sweat out and detoxified. If you get a little bit of a glow in your, in your practice and not every yoga practice needs to be a great sweat, but if you get a little bit of a glow, if you feel that little bit of wetness on your body at the end of it, you know, you've purged out toxins. Mm -hmm. So your body's that much more free. You're in just such a clearer mental state. And um, that can't be a bad thing. I'm sure you noticed it when uh, you did Thai yoga. I also practiced Thai yoga in my massage practice. Um, and we did like two hour sessions on a regular basis. We did two hour sessions. And I found people, I had one client who really struggled with anxiety, like struggled intensely with anxiety to the point of medicating to, to handle it. And when we would do the stretch, I would stretch them out and then just like slow and just remind them, breathe and relax and do it. Don't resist the stretch, breathe into the stretch. By the time we were done, this person got off the mat and told me that there was no anxiety feeling at all. It was be, it was calm and peaceful. And then when I checked in with them later in the week and asked, well, now that we've gone a few days out, how do you feel? And they shared with me that their anxiety had been gone for days, that their, their limiting anxiety was just done. And it was just, I mean, it obviously it came back because the stuff that hadn't been dealt with was still there. Uh, but just through the deep stretching, just through the calming and the breathing and the presence and all of those things, were so beneficial to this person. It works. It works. I keep saying it, you know, it works. All of it. It works. Mm -hmm. they're just, and they're, they're ancient systems. Thai massage is an ancient practice from Thailand. Yoga. I mean, these are thousands of years old. These, these techniques, these practices, thousands of years old, this knowledge that we're tapping into and, and gaining nowadays. And they work. Mm -hmm. They work. And I say they work. You got to stay with them. They're not a magic pill. They're not a, here's your one time massage and poof, you're done. But it's not like we talked earlier before your closest healing hands are your own. It's mm -hmm. lovely to go get worked on. It's lovely. I love working on people and I love getting worked on, but it's your daily self care. It's that maintenance whether it's mm -hmm. that five minute foot rub at the end of the day, just putting your favorite cream on or some lymphatic drainage down your arm. You know, if you've got a sore throat, just lymphatic drain, like whatever it is, just to help your body out a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know? Help it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's the key to all of it, right? It's just connecting with self improving yourself, helping yourself be better and just loving yourself, truly loving yourself enough to do these things to make yourself better. Yeah. Well, I mean, true. I, I hear what you're saying, but I do what I really try to emphasize in my classes and toward myself is that I'm good right now. Right. I, I don't mm. want to be driving all the time for better and better. That can be exhausting too. You know, that's true. I've really had to learn. I had one special therapist. She's an excellent um, craniosacral therapist. And uh, she knows me. She knows I've been practicing yoga and keeping my, <laughs> my crooked spine as happy as it can be for all these years. But she reminded me too, to sometimes let it go, mm -hmm. right? That, that your, your body and your nervous system and your energy it gets exhausted when we're constantly pushing it to be the best, right? And to, to be perfectly straight, perfectly strong. So those words she gave me, because I was in a really, I was so tense and in so much pain. And she's like, back way off. And I was like, wait, you mean you want me to like, let my scoliosis go? <laughs> and she's like, yes, just, just let it go. Stop trying to keep yourself right up. And I tell you, Toba, that, that release of that, 25 years of effort or whatever it was at that point, that permission she gave me to just let go too. You know, that's a nice balance to find as well. And I try to share with my students in classes a lot that yes, like here's that more challenging pose. Here's where we can go. If you're breathing well, mm -hmm. if you're having no stress, let's back off here. Are you having any stress? How are you doing with this? Cause let's not go here. If, you're already stressed out here. 
you know, we want to slowly get into this practice in such a loving way where it's not chasing some goal of, you know, the, the, the greatest pose or whatever. Beautiful if it gets there, but it's the peeling away and the steady practice and the being okay with you as you are today, tomorrow, it might be a great day. You can do all kinds of things on your mat one day and the next day you're stuck and tired. And we've just got to kind of be okay with it because that's life, right? Right. As you're life. saying that I'm getting yeah. chills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it really is. That, that, takes, that takes years to kind of wrap your head around and realize I'm okay as I am. <laughs> you know, yeah, I just got chills like, again when you said that. <laughs> That's, I'm pretty sure that's a message I'm supposed to be hearing because I, that is an area that I struggle with is just being okay as I am and not trying yeah. to push for the, actually, that's a message yeah. I've been getting a lot from the universe yeah. as of late it's is very just to be a mindfulness practice, you know, um, that, 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 that awareness of self-compassion and acceptance. Mm -hmm. acceptance. Before we, before we wrap up, um, we touched earlier on the woman whose book you read from mm -hmm. and she talked about bottom up, top down. Mm -hmm. And I want to just, and we've kind of talked about this throughout it, but I want to remind your, your listeners that yoga is very much like that too, right? The physical practice is only the third branch of an eight branch system. The physical practice is what we call the ground up or the base stuff, the the, the gross stuff, the muscles, the bones, right? But the, what's called the rajastic, which means king or top, rajastic yoga, and this is again, thousands of years old, it goes back just as long as anything physical is from the top down. So you can step on your yoga mat and deal with your stress through the bottom up. You can move your body and breathe it out with your bigger stuff, but you can also Go at it from top down. And that's the, the meditation, the concentration, the breath work, the subtler practice. So those are things to remember that it doesn't all have to be sweat and movement and pushing your body and all that. It can be, you know, laying down and, and doing your body scan, laying down and you know, just taking those breaths and feeling your heartbeat or whatever type of meditative technique you use. It's all yoga, you know, it's called, mm -hmm. it's the eight fold path. And we start off with that heavy stuff. Some of us purging through the crap, right? This stuff, Ugh. But then you start to get to this stuff and clean out this stuff too. And some of us go at it from the top down, meditating, concentrating, doing that kind of stuff, visual focus. And some go at it from the bottom up. And I try to weave that all in, you know, and just, just in case anybody's interested to, to come, uh, I'm not only plugging myself, but the wonderful University of Windsor who not only had yoga before the pandemic, but since the pandemic, they've been offering it free virtually, along with all kinds of other physical practices that other teachers are doing. We're live. You can come to our live classes, but they're virtual and they're free. And the links to mine are through my website. So it's cocoyoga.ca. And it has links to that the session with the University of Windsor. They can come and try it out see some of the physical stuff I teach, as well as the very subtle stuff. It's pretty, pretty nice to go all over the place and um, other instructors as well who are teaching cool things too. So kudos to the University of Windsor for keeping us all mentally really healthy through this. They've really been on a big tsunami wave of mental health awareness for the last number of years. I've been very grateful to work for that institution because there's just so much mindfulness and yoga being brought to the students and the faculty. So kudos to them. And, you know, while I'm plugging them, I'm just going to plug all the other wonderful people who, who ask me to help them out, right? Community living, um, 
the, the John McGivney Center. Right now, the school board, I feel so privileged to be bringing yoga and really a lot of the subtle practices to these kids and, mm -hmm. and these students. So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. It works. It does work. <laughs> I've probably said that four or five times now today. <laughs> But it really does, but it's slow. It's when you're ready. Maybe you race on the path for a while and then you kind of feel like you're off it, but remember you're always on it, right? Even the dips are part of, whoo, they, they kind of bump you along even further when we go down. It pushes us up, right? It's that whole flip thing of getting into the muck and then coming up out of it. It's kind of a rush. Mm -hmm. so on we go on the roller coaster of life right peeling 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 and some days we're stuck and and that's okay too that's mm -hmm. okay we are human well i'm glad you you mentioned the link because i will be posting in the show notes i will be checking it out i hope to see some of the rest of you checking it out as well yeah, um, right now we just started summer semester so there's morning noon and evening class times to choose from through the week and um we've been going since march of 2020 all semester yeah that's amazing that's it's absolutely amazing oh yeah just open. You don't need to be linked to the university right now. You just can, can be free for community members as well. That is absolutely awesome. I'm I, totally checking that out. I agree. And you know, that's, that's being woven into so many places that our children are benefiting as well. I think it's tremendous. How Very much. More and more yoga is, it's become the norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me for our episode. I've enjoyed this very, very much. Thank you for letting me go on about something I'm very passionate, I believe in so much. And for the little retrospect into our <laughs> fun times at Erlesta, very fun times. And it's been a pleasure every time I see you, my dear. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Toba. So thanks again to Coco for that amazing chat about yoga. I don't know if you guys learned something. I know I learned some great stuff in there. I will definitely be checking out her class. I hope you will too. Um, I had no idea that these resources existed in this city and I'm so grateful that they are. So to finish up our talk, same as usual, we are going to pull a few cards, uh, just like we did in the last episode, pull a few cards for the collective just to give you some guidance. So we're going to start with uh, a tarot card. Oh, before I even did it, popped right out. This is wonderful. We got the card of celebration. Celebration. I want to say in traditional tarot, this is the three of cups, I believe. Uh, this is celebration. So if you're looking at the video, you can see that there are three women dancing in the rain, having a good time. They got flowers in their hair. They got flowers in the air. Hands are up, dancing, and just joy, celebration. So this card is all about just being in the moment and celebrating and just being present. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate everything you've been through up until this point. Take a break from the hard work. And I think the universe is trying to share this one with me too. Take a break from the hard work and celebrate. Celebrate how far you've come. Celebrate all the successes that you've had, even if they're just little successes. Celebrate them anyway. It doesn't all have to be hard work, just even as Coco said. It doesn't have to be the hard work in yoga all the time. You don't always have to be pushing yourself. You can just be and be present and be, oh, I'm getting chills as I say it. Being present and be yourself and celebrate. Let go of the stress for a bit and just be and enjoy. And life is short. Be here and celebrate what you've been given in this life. Celebrate what you've gotten to. Jump around, play in the puddles, play in the rain. Pretend you're a kid again. Run out in the summer rain. Jump in puddles. Enjoy life and celebrate. Oh, what a great message. So we're also going to get a message from our guides in our Oracle cards and see what they have to share with us. There's a good one. All right. Oh, this is a great one for today. Physical body. We got two people on this card. We got fruits on the bottom. We got fish and, and 
birds, we got the star, we got the moon, we got flowers, and we got these two people holding hands, physical body. At the bottom, we have Gaia. So as I talked about before, I don't know all the meanings of these cards. I could take a guess at this one, but I'm going to go ahead and find the meaning in the book just to see what the book has to say, just to make sure, because I've never encountered this card before. This one's a new one. It's a relatively new deck. Um, and I'm still learning the meanings. So let me pull this one up. Physical body. So, oh, no surprise that we got this one. This one is for nutrition, physical well-being, groundedness, and practicality. It says, Gaia, the divine, the divine Mother Earth, is present, making you aware of your marvelous physical body, her great gift to you. Be grateful for her gift. It is a wondrous temporary home for your spirit. She asks that you give it, to the, give it the respect and attention it deserves and needs. So take care of it with love and attention. Give it adequate rest, a proper diet, and a calm and peaceful environment. Spend time with nature as the earth is the true mother to your body and will restore it. The better you care for your body, the more it will serve your spirit. Listen to your body, its gut feelings, its flutters, its impulses, as Gaia speaks to you through it. This is the earth mother cradling you, protecting you and guiding you through each day. She advises that, that you not she advises you not to live in your head alone and ignore your physical self. Without a strong connection to your body, you'll be weak and unable to achieve your goals. Gaia's message is pay attention to your body. Oh boy, is it ever the thing, just like, just like Coco was saying about the importance of connecting to your physical self, that when you're just doing the mental work, you're not connecting the physical and the physical also connects to the mental, the top down, bottom up, care for your physical body, make sure that you're eating right, make sure that you're getting enough rest, make sure that you're stretching, make sure that you're connecting to your physical self and it will help your mental self. What a wonderful message. We're going to go with one more card here before we do our affirmation. These are a new deck that I've gotten called the prayer, angel prayer oracle card. So we're going to get a message from the angels and see what the angels want you to know. Oh, we got peace and harmony. Archangel Ragel. Oh, I'm familiar with this one before. Thank you, Ragel, for surrounding my life in a harmonious light. So I'm going to look up Ragel because this is still, again, it's a new deck. So I'm still learning the meanings of all of them. And off the top of my head, I'm not remembering exactly what Regal is for, but that's okay. Like I said, we're gonna look it up. It's all right, this message is for the collective. So under peace and harmony, we've got, thank you Regal for surrounding my life in a harmonious light. A wave of harmony is being washed over your life right now. Please trust that the angels are here to help you resolve any conflict that you have, that has been disturbing your inner peace at this time. Take time to surrender to God and the angels, any concerns you have about any conflicts or arguments and allow them to lovingly guide you to peace. The angels are asking you to stand down from any conflicts that are going on in your life right now. Take a step back and allow the angels in so they can help to restore the peace. They want you to know that they are aware of your challenges and the concerns you have, but until you trust them, nothing can change. Take heart. The angels of peace are here now, and they're encouraging you to let them bring the matter to a fair and peaceful conclusion. So now Archangel Regal is an important angel, so we're going to talk a little bit about who he is and why. Regal's meaning, friend of God, and he is the angel of harmony. He works very closely with those who call on him to bring an end to conflicts and challenges. He helps us to remember the importance of relationships, both romantically and personally. It is important to have good people around us. Regal is one of the angels of justice, working closely with Michael and Zadkiel to resolve situations fairly and for everyone's highest good. 
Call on him for help in creating harmonious bonds in your relationships. Ooh. So right along with taking care of our physical body and celebrating, we've got peace and harmony. So that's just a reminder to let the angels do their thing. Sometimes we get into this space where we think we have to solve and everything. And again, I think the universe is sharing this one with me too, because this is an area I need help with. Sometimes we end up trying to think that we have to solve everything, that every situation that comes to us, we have to be the one to find a solution. And sometimes the answer is just to let go. You don't have to be the one to solve everything. You don't have to come up with a solution for every single problem that you encounter. You don't have to change people. Sometimes you don't even have to change yourself. You just have to let the chips fall where they may. You just have to let things happen. Step back enough to let the angels, spirit, the universe, the force, God, call it what you want. Step back and let nature take its course. Let things happen however they're going to happen without you needing to change how it's going to happen or control how it's going to happen. Let go of the control and just be, be at peace and harmony and just let, let the angels help to solve your problem is what this message is saying. So we're going to get our final card here, our affirmation to end this out. So what is our affirmation for the collective right now? What message do we need to hear? Oh, that's a lot of cards. We're going to have to, I know there's a lot of affirmations here, but we're going to need to narrow it down to one, one message. Just one. Oh, this is good. I am safe. I am safe. I trust my intuition to lead me down the right path. Looking back on my trials, I see that I am still here and thriving. I always end up better, stronger, and wiser. I've proven to myself that I will always make it time and time again. I am safe. That goes back to a message I mentioned before um, to, remind, to remind yourself that everything that you have faced up until this point, you've made it through. You might be a little worse for wear when you come out the other end, but every single conflict, every single difficulty that you have faced, you are standing here now having made it through it. When you started that conflict, you looked at it thinking, I don't know how I'm ever going to make it through. I don't know how I'm ever going to survive this. And yet somehow you did. Somehow you came through it all on the other side. And here you are. You're safe. There's nothing that that can't be handled. You are safe. And if you let go, the angels will help you find your way out. You don't have to find the solution because you've always been able to make it through. And it wasn't just through you. It was through the help of your spiritual team, through your angels and your guides and all those around you who are helping you on your path to get to where you are. When you let go, And remember that no matter what happens, you are safe, you are held, you are, you are protected. If you remember that you are safe, you are loved, you are protected, and you let the angels and your guides take over, they will help you find your answer. So focus on your physical body, make sure that you are caring for yourself, drinking enough water, sleeping enough, caring for yourself, getting out in nature, doing that self-care and celebrate your wins, celebrate your successes, celebrate all the things that you have gotten to to this point, not just where you have to go next, but where you have gotten to now and be grateful for what you have been through and celebrate, get out there and just enjoy life. There's only one life at this point, this life you are living right now. It's the only one that you've got right now. This life with his experiences is the one you've got right now. Celebrate. Don't just see your negatives, see your positives and celebrate. So that's all I have for you this week. Um, I hope that what you've learned today will help you moving forward. I hope that you check out uh, some of the links. I will uh, link information to all the stuff that I've shared today in the description and in the show notes. Um, I hope that you will check out Coco's class. I know I will be. I hope that you learned something through this experience. I hope that you've come to a new understanding of yourself. 
So until next time, be, be kind to yourself. As Coco said, and as I say, be compassionate, have compassion for yourself, have compassion for others. Be, it's okay when you mess up. Forgive yourself. When other people mess up, forgive them too. We're all just human. We're, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience on this planet all together, doing our best to find our way. So keep going. You're doing awesome. Keep going. Until next time, love and light, fellow human.